And then you call it terrorism. As far as the struggle is concerned in occupied Kashmir, that is absolutely legitimate in the context of international law. Now, what is happening in Ukraine for that matter? You may not agree or uh, may not agree or agree with anything, but if you, Ukrainians uh, are saying that they are fighting against foreign occupation and the entire Western countries have provided arms worth billions of dollars to Ukraine. I remember that India had provided an entire dozier to Pakistan at the time of Pulwama. Uh, also, that you know that these these are the problems. These this is this this is the evidence that you are sponsoring terror in the valley. And let's look at the recent Pooch attack. Um, you in fact you uh, sort of justified uh, the Pooch attack uh, yeah. as legitimate, saying that only the military was attacked and not civilians. So therefore, it's not an uh, it, it's okay. Uh, the pooch attack, the five soldiers died, five Indian soldiers died. Mm -hmm. Now, is it not an overt support to terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir then, what you said? Then you call it terrorism. As far as the struggle is concerned in occupied Kashmir, that is absolutely legitimate in the context of international law. There are, I mean, I will refer you, I mean, there's a resolution, uh, number 3314. If you go through that resolution, that... Uh, fully justifies even armed struggle against foreign occupation. So uh, if you go, I mean, if you see strictly from the international law point of view, uh, struggles against, now what is happening in Ukraine for that matter? You may not agree or uh, may not agree or agree with anything, but if you, Ukrainians uh, are saying that they are fighting against foreign occupation, and the entire Western countries have provided arms worth billions of dollars to Ukraine. So foreign occupation, from our perspective, uh, uh, since uh, Kashmiris are occupied by a foreign country, their struggle is absolutely legitimate so long as they are targeting military. Yes, but that's the, military. Whole, that is the, whole, that is the whole point, that if these were, whether these were normal Kashmiris, whether these were terrorists from across the border, we don't know. And... I'm sure uh, there, there are, there are, there are, and it's not just the, it's, they might, Kashmiris might, might be involved, when some Kashmiris might be involved, who are living in the valley, but it's mostly from across the border that's coming, and that is the sticking point. Um, in fact, imagine an Indian diplomat, if they had caught up and said, and supported some, uh, you know, let's say, attack on uh, Pakistani military in Khyber Pakhtunwa, for instance, you know, that is not acceptable, no. isn't it? But, because but you are would, but, condoning. But no, no, we would never say this thing when it comes to your northeastern states. If something happens there, we would never use this language because we do not consider those states under foreign occupation. So here we must be very clear when you talk about Brochistan or Sin, they're part, they're part, integral part of Pakistan. And when that is exactly what I'm saying for us, the, for us. Kashmir is a part of but, India. But, so but the we, question, this is a zero-sum game then. But no, it's not a zero-sum game. You know, we we should be very clear. Pakistan and India have been talked about Kashmir now for decades, frankly speaking. And you would agree with me that uh, both Pakistan and India agree to resolve this long-standing issue through dialogue. If you go through the Simla Agreement, you go through the Composite Dialogue Framework, even the last joint statement between Pakistan and India uh, issued on 9 December 2016 here in uh, Islamabad. Even, you know, we, we both sides agreed to resolve this issue. Now, if you, you are, India, in my view, uh, has, is, 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 is adopting a kind of inherently contradictory position. On the one hand, say you, uh, you say that Pakistan does not have any locus standi, it's an integral part of India, we would never discuss Kashmir. Then why we have been wasting our time for the last 50 years since the Simla Agreement was signed and we have been discussing the Jammu and Kashmir dispute? I, I, I'm not cont contesting here. You would immediately respond to me by saying that we are discussing, quote-unquote, Pakistan occupied Kashmir, Gilgil Baltistan. So let it be that, I mean, that may be the case. But the question is that Jammu and Kashmir is a dispute, is the core dispute. 
and yes, we need to resolve so, it. So are so are there are IFP speaking to activists in let's say Kilgit Baltistan uh, in Khyber Pakhtunwa. We've spoken to them. They are they say that they want to be part of India and they are struggling because they are being oppressed by Pakistan. It's the same logic that you are applying for uh, for very, in fact, very, in fact very, uh, why should Pakistan support terror in Kashmir? That's my question. Very, when very people nice are dying every very, day because of terrorist attacks in Balochistan, in Khyber Pakhtunwa. Very, very nice to hear this, that the people of Gilgil, Baltistan want to join India. Even people in Azad, Jammu and Kashmir want to join India. Then all the more reason for India to agree to holding a plebiscite in the entire Jammu and Kashmir state, because if people here want to join India, so it's the best solution. Uh, but why India is reluctant to go down that route? It is incomprehensible in my view. On the one hand, because, you claim... Because the U.S. Security Council, as I, we just spoke about that, sir, that the first condition, the preconditions for plebiscite, which is withdrawal, complete withdrawal of Pakistani troops from that region, uh, you know, complete uh, uh, removal of the of the troops from that region. That is that is the key, and that that but first that, condition was never met. Even if it was, but, you're saying that it was torn down, and even but that can even down. but that can happen even today, provided India is willing to discuss Jammu and Kashmir under the auspices of the UN and in accordance with the template, which has been which was established, you know since 1947 till 1957. The question is, is India ready to seriously discuss and settle this problem? My view is that India uses the dialogue or the engagement process to buy time, to prevaricate, to procrastinate on Kashmir. 